superior approach, you, you won't really see this muscle. You'll have to dissect from an anterior approach to see it. Okay? Um, so from this view, you'll see it. Okay. Um, here are the muscles uh, as they originate from this common tendinous ring, this annulus tendineus, right here. Okay, that's sort of enveloping the, 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 the optic nerve and some of these other nerves here. Um, and we can see that sort of cross formation of the rectus muscles. And we can also see just superficial to superior rectus, the palmator palpebrae, superioris muscle. That's the first muscle you'll see in dissection, very easy to find. Medially here, you'll have the superior oblique and inferiorly the inferior oblique. So these are the, the uh, entirety of the extraocular muscles of the eye, okay? Here's what they actually look like from uh, 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 when you dissect. So again, like I said, you'll see, the first thing you'll see is really this frontal nerve, but just, just below the frontal nerve, you'll find the, the muscle belly of the levator palpebrae superioris. It's coming from the, the lesser wing of the sphenoid and inserting to that superior tarsal plate, right? So it's going to elevate your upper eyelid. Um, it is innervated, again, I mentioned by that superior division of cranial nerve 3, okay, which you should also see. Um, and here you see it in cross section right here. That's the levator palpebrae superior. Uh, you'll then cut that, you'll cut that uh, anteriorly and reflect it posteriorly, and you'll see just below that this muscle superior rectus, uh, which originates from that common tendinous ring <coughs> and inserts on the superior surface of the eyeball, also receives the superior division of the oculomotor nerve. So, same nerve going to both of these, these two muscles here. And that will elevate the eyeball, so help you look up, and it will also perform this other motion called <coughs> cycloduction of the eyeball, which is something I'm going to talk about uh, in greater detail in a minute. Um, it's a rotational motion. Um, the superior oblique, we've talked about a bit here, this medial one off the lesser wing of the sphenoid, and then has a superolateral insertion onto the eyeball and receives just that little trochlear nerve right there. And that will, and it's sort of counterintuitive, and you'll see why this, this is the case in a minute. But the superior oblique muscle actually depresses the eyeball, or allows you to look down, um, and also does this in cycloduction. Here's a, a, a picture of it um, with more of the dissection field cleared away. So here they've reflected uh, superior rectus and, and levator palpebrae, and you can see more clearly the muscle belly and the tendon of the superior oblique. Okay. Um, next, medial rectus. So to find medial rectus, uh, you'll have to retract, uh, retract the superior oblique and look for medial rectus which is a, a pure adductor, an adductor of the eyeball, so to look inwards towards your nose. Um, and that's also innervated by, by the oculomotor nerve, the inferior division. Inferior rectus, uh, deep deep in the, in the orbit underneath, underneath the, the optic nerve, you'll see that muscle belly there, and that will uh, depress the eyeball or help you look down. Finally, on the lateral side, the lateral rectus, also from the common, common tendinous ring, there's the lateral eyeball that will help you abduct and sort of look out the corner of your eyes to look towards the periphery. That will be what the lateral rectus is doing, innervated by cranial nerve six. And then we see it again retracted right there with the, with the abducent nerve piercing it. Again, inferior oblique, Seen from the anterior aspect, this is how you'll see it in the lab. Sort of, I like to think of it as a little hammock that the eyeball sits on, um, and that's coming from the maxilla, the orbital surface of the maxilla, and inserting inferiorly and sort of inferior laterally on the eyeball, um, and also receives the oculomotor nerve, and that's going to again 
in a sort of not very intuitive way is uh, elevating the eyeball even though it's inferiorly located. So. All right, so now we're gonna talk in a little bit more detail about movements of the eyeball. Okay, so how the, how the eyes move. Um, and they all sort of receive rotational motions on these three different axes. So there'll be uh, rotations across the superior inferior axis, this antero posterior axis, and what's often called just the optic axis, okay? And finally, there's a medial lateral axis going through the eyeball. So any, any motions that these muscles produce on the eyeball is some rotation around one of these three axes, okay? Um, so if you are rotating around the medial lateral axis, you are elevating or depressing the eyeball, okay? So you're elevating the eyeball to look upward, depressing the eyeball to look downward. That's, that's rotation around that medial lateral axis. Likewise, you can have rotation around um, the supero inferior axis, and that's gonna be either to abduct or to adduct the eyeball, okay? So that is what that looks like, sort of looking either towards your nose for adduction or out the corner of your eye for abduction, okay? Finally, uh, rotations around the optic axis are these um, strange sounding motions called incycloduction and excycloduction, um, which, which are sort of not desirable uh, motions because they sort of give the impression that the room is spinning, but it's just in cycloduction would be sort of the, uh, the eye moving inward this way, ex cycloduction the opposite way. And obviously when we look around the world, we, we don't perceive this motion and that's because it's canceled out and we'll see how that happens um, right now. Okay, so again, um, elevation and depression of the eyeball is rotation around the transverse or medial lateral axis of the eyeball. Uh, rotation around the supero inferior axis is abduction, adduction, looking inward or outward. This is up or down. And then rotation around the, the, the optic axis, this axis right here, produces those, those incycloductory and excycloductory motions. Okay, so how does this work? Well, uh, you have muscles pulling like this, so you have to, so for instance, the rectus muscles here, you have the superior rectus sort of aligned in this orientation and then ghosted, this ghosted line right here, the inferior rectus, um, this is medial towards the nose. Um, and what you have to do is you have to sort of break down the sort of line of action of this muscle into its components, so there's a, of a, a horizontal component here and a vertical component here. And so this component, this longer component, is that elevation motion, okay? So again, rotation, medial, lateral axis. The smaller component, this horizontal component here is producing incycloduction, okay? This is for, again, this is for the superior rectus, which does incycloduction and elevation uh, of the eyeball. Inferior rectus, uh, is doing exactly the opposite because the attachments are from below. So instead of elevating, it's going to depress the eye and it's going to excycloduct instead of incycloduct. Okay. The obliques are a little bit more complex. So here's the orientation of the of the superior and inferior oblique muscles. Again, you 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 separate the, the line of action of this muscle into two components, and those components are gonna produce, again, for the superior oblique muscle, it's actually going to depress the eyeball, and that has to do with its attachment being far back, even though it's superior, the attachment is so far back here that it actually depresses the eye, and it also has uh, an incycloduction component as well, okay? Um, and so here you see that, how that action works. So the, this muscle will contract through the pulley here. This is the superior oblique. And we'll 
pull the eye such that you get this, this encycloinduction motion. The inferior oblique, same sort of deal, but it's the opposite. It <laughs> elevates the eye and produces excycloinduction. Um, and again, illustrated here from below, when this muscle tenses, the eye is going to rotate around the optic axis outward, and that's what we call excycloinduction, illustrated here. So like I said, these cycloinductory motions are not desirable, um, and they're canceled out by muscles working in concert. Uh, important to note, though, is that the medial and lateral rectus muscles don't have any cycloduction. They're pure adductors and pure abductors of the eye. So they don't do any cycloduction. But all these other muscles, all the other extraocular muscles that move the eye do produce either incycloduction or excycloduction, and they're canceled out. So incycloducting muscles will be canceled out by excycloducting muscles being contracted at the same time. So it doesn't look like the world is spinning all the time. So how does that happen? Well, the way that that occurs is that these muscles are moved together in two different eye positions. So when the, in, when the eye is in the adducted position, as shown here, um, in this position, the superior oblique will become a pure depressor, and the inferior oblique will become a pure elevator. So in, when the eye is in the adducted position or looking inward, the obliques act to elevate and depress the eyeball. And because one is an incycloductor and the other is an excycloductor, those motions will cancel out, okay? Um, and so that's illustrated here. So again, the medial rectus is just doing pure adduction, looking inward towards the nose, and the inferior oblique and the superior oblique are gonna cancel each other out. Those, those cycloduction motions are gonna cancel out Superior oblique is going to become a pure depressor, inferior oblique a pure elevator of the eye in that position. Um, now there's another position. So when the eye is, is abducted or, or turned outward towards the ear, um, in this position, the rectus muscles take over. So when the eye is, is abducted, you have the actions of, of the superior and inferior rectus canceling each other out, okay? So in this, in this scenario, superior rectus will be a pure elevator, inferior rectus a pure depressor in the abducted position. And so that's illustrated here. Lateral rectus, again, no cycloduction motion. Superior rectus cancels out with inferior rectus and you get pure elevation and pure depression. So if you uh, put these two things together, you can draw this useful sort of uh, vector diagram, okay, and you'll notice how the cycloduction is canceled out on both sides. And so these are just the abbreviations for the muscle. And so if I ask you, you know, how would you contract your muscles to look at the tip of your nose? And then using this diagram, how would you deduce that? So where's, where is the nose in relation to the eye? Well, I guess it's the first question. <laughs> medial, right? So how do we look medially? Medial rectus, right? The pure, pure adductor. So we're going to use medial rectus. And so to look at the tip of the nose downward, what are you going to use? <coughs> Superior oblique, right? So you don't have to necessarily memorize a table of muscle actions for the eye. You can simply sort of draw this diagram and say, well, if I'm looking inward, to look down, I use the superior oblique. To look up, I use the inferior oblique. If I'm looking outward, I use the rectus to look up, and uh, the superior rectus to look up, and the inferior rectus to look down. So if you can just memorize how to draw this, you can sort of deduce all the eye uh, motions and the, the muscles responsible for, for those actions, OK? OK, and so here is a, a, a depiction of all these different uh, uh, eye positions. So here's the, the neutral position, elevation, depression, uh, looking downward and outward, etc., upward and outward. And so here you have all those listed and the sort of the muscles that contribute to those motions and how they're innervated. Okay, 
so you can study that uh, later. Um, lastly, I'll just end on some of the relationships. Oh, yeah. Uh, why can't you move one eye without moving the other eye? Or, or well, I think some people can. Some people that have great control, but typically uh, you can't. Why is that important? Does anyone know the answer to that? I certainly don't know. Can someone here move one eye independent of the other? No? I've seen people do. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not certain why that is. People with excellent mastery of their extraocular <laughs> muscles. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so again, so any other questions, by the way? <coughs> All right. So here, here are the relationships sort of nerve muscle relationships. Here's that, that common tendinous ring. I don't know why all these muscles are in different colors, but um, you can see the muscles that are part of the tendinous ring. They include the medial rectus, superior, lateral, and inferior rectus. Uh, muscles not part of the tendinous ring, the superior oblique, and the levator palpebrae uh, superioris. You can see some stuff here being transmitted through this fissure, the superior orbital fissure including a bunch of branches of V1 that we talked about already, as well as the superior ophthalmic vein. You can also see uh, lower down in the superior orbital fissure, you can see uh, the deeper nerves, the nerves that you'll have to dig more in the dissection to find, and that will include the oculomotor nerve, the superior and inferior division, the nasociliary nerve, and the abducens. So these nerves will sort of pop out at you right away. These will be easy to find, the, the frontal, the lacrimal, the trochlear. These will require uh, a deeper dissection, okay? Um, the optic nerve, of course, with the ophthalmic artery traveling through the optic canal. Remember, those are the only two things in there. And then finally, so this, this link was on, on Dr. Krause's slides from last year, but I went here and I could not figure out how to use this actually. So if someone figures this out, let me know. But I do have this, which I think is pretty cool and, and could be a good sort of supplementary study tool, but it's a flash animation um, where you can look at sort of the, the contraction of the, of the extraocular muscles. So again, you have this sort of vector diagram and you can just sort of move it around and see how